Let me get your take on this developing situation right off the bat. What do you see? Well, you know, Maria, there's so many questions right now, not a lot of answers. You know, what is this all, what is this stemming from? Where is this coming from? You know, of course, this is a country, Mali is a country that the language there is French. Um, this, they are mostly Muslim, 95% according to the CIA's World Fact, fact Book. Um, and we're seeing things that indicate what they're saying during this siege that indicate that this is, uh, that this is Islamic uh, extremism of some sort. Now, what we're waiting to find out is what are the motivations of these people who are these groups, but it is a country that is war-torn. It's been in conflict since 2012, um, and there are conflicts even within the um, the Muslim population as to what uh, as to um, the vision for what kind of Islamic state they should have. There are places that have that have had strict Sharia law, there are but the country as itself has been democratically ruled for a number of years, and this is all just kind of a place where there's a big power vacuum. Right now, this hotel specifically, it's one where Western stay. It's known as a luxury hotel. Uh, as an intelligence operator, I would say this is probably um, intended to uh, go after Western ideology. It's intended they are firing for effect by attacking this particular hotel. But right now, we really just don't have a lot of answers. We have a lot of questions. Is there it just there West, are, is Western ideology or is it religious ideology? Like Maria said, if you cannot cite the Koran, you're not getting out of here. Right. To me, this is religion. No, it is religion, and it is. But but the reason I say Western is because this is a hotel where we know right. that there are more Westerners that are staying. So, and of course, one of the big points that I want to bring up is this is a country that Paris, or I'm sorry, that France, French armed forces have been trying to help out okay. areas of the country that have been taken over um, by extremists. Uh, French armed forces have been there trying to help out the country, trying to take those mm -hmm. parts back and, and in fact have. So with the, the attacks in Paris, is this somehow related? We don't yet know. Right now, um, operators who are trying to get in there and help, intelligence officials, they'll all be trying to figure out who are these people, what are their motivations, and that, that will be very helpful in trying to um, figure out how they go about trying to rescue the people who but are it, still being kept hostage It right does now. appear that these are radical Islamic terrorist reports yes. that the terrorists, as they stormed this hotel, were shouting Allah Akbar. Right. And it's a, a clearly attacked on Westerners, on a different way of life. This is a ho another, it, the Air France crews are said to stay in this mm -hmm. hotel in particular. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that Turkish Airlines as well. Speaks to this attack. And, and, and it comes, Maria, you know, this is the fifth Islamist terrorist incident in the last 20 days. Mm -hmm. They talked about, you know, the day of rage in Israel a couple of months ago. This has been a month of rage worldwide. And to Dagan's point, we're talking about Islamist terrorism against Western ideology and Western targets. Right. So, I mean, it, it really puts a, a hesitance, at least in, from my perspective, if somebody wants to invest in emerging markets, knowing that this type of rampage and massacre is going on worldwide. Important right. to bring up, though, that this is also a place where Muslims are fighting Muslims, mm -hmm. their own ideal yeah. ideology within their own religion. They're fighting over, over you know, how the faith should be handled and how they should live. Mm -hmm. So it's not just Western ideology, and it'll be interesting to see you know, what, what comes out of this and who these people actually are. Of course, great point that this is a place where Westerners stay. Let, let, me, let me bring in Matthew Graham, a uh, terrorism yes. expert. What strikes you about this situation, Matthew? Well, one of the things that I find interesting is whatever metrics we're using to be able to sit and say there's no emergent threat or there's nothing on the horizon aren't working because... The same system that we use here in the U.S. is used in France, and it's one of those issues where if no credible threat exists over the past 20 days, we've had a tremendous amount of terrorist activity and casualties for no credible threat existing. So whatever metrics is being used isn't working based on how these cells are now operating, that's which is a, off the a grid. really important point because, you know, even the leaders in New York, even though the Times Square shot was in the video, continue to say there's no credible threat. But can you really say that when, when, when you've got so many unknowns? I can jump in here on that one because when, when you talk about a credible threat, they're actually specifically referring to what intelligence, intelligence we have. There are times when we, are, when we hear from sources within the, in the intelligence community that there's a credible threat. Uh, they are seeing activity. They are seeing activity that they're mm -hmm. monitoring on the Internet, on phones, when we have that ability to monitor it. And when there's a credible threat, that's just a different situation, both the intelligence community and the law enforcement com community, as to what that means. And that's why they're using that terminology. I have a pretty good indication. That terminology that leaves, leaves, yeah, go ahead, Matthew. That terminology leaves that gap where, from an operational guy standpoint, where I come from, I'm going to work off the grid. We, it's Thanksgiving next week, and, and none of us had met before today, but we all know that Thursday, in between 2 and 3, we're going to eat eat a meal. So <laughs> right. it's, it's one of those where I can show up in that environment and 
and start to manipulate that environment and start to cause terror and havoc and not need to send emails, send videos. We all know the intent. The intent is jihad, so commit jihad, and that's what we're seeing. Jonathan, we we open our, where's the credible threat? Well, you know, the Paris slaughter, the Russian plane downing, the Boko Haram bombing, the French uh, French stabbing. There was a Jewish teacher uh, stabbed in French, so open your eyes. I think it's pretty clear that there is a credible threat. Where we know specifically (laughs) there was, however, is in Malaysia, you know, where the president's going to be. I mean, there's been explicit credible threats reported in Malaysia, so this is a worldwide phenomenon. In my perspective, Maria, it's our inability to respond forcefully. That's why this issue is metastasizing worldwide. Yesterday, we got more specific information from Jim Comey, the FBI director, because we already knew some months ago from him that 900 ISIS-related individuals, you know, that 900 individuals were under investigation here in the United States for um, ties to potential ties to ISIS, but there are 50, and Liz McDonald reported this yesterday, there are about 50 who are under more intense surveillance here in the United States. So what does that mean, Dakin? That uh, it's just how how closely that they're boring in. It, it, legal, there's probably some legal ram, legal terms. Related I, I've been to on how surveillance under teams surveillance. before. I've I've been trained in surveillance detection as well as as. Um, conducting surveillance and so, somebody's on uh, under active surveillance that means there are going to be teams watching them all the time but, but again these, that, also, French... that also means that there's going to be technical surveillance uh, and other things yep. so there's, there's, a these of, French there's a lot bombers of on a watch them. list I mean weren't, weren't we told that these French uh, bombers and killers were on a watch list a lot of these individuals well, Abu Ad, the Abu Ad, right? they tried to take Abu Ad, the the architect of these attacks out in Syria and it appears as if they had no idea that he had come back into the country right mm-hmm. And that not only was he in the country, he was, he was Paris, nearby yeah. the soccer stadium. And there was video. We don't have the video <laughs> yet, but apparently there was video of him captured on the uh, the TV system, the surveillance the um, surveillance system in Paris of him walking around as the attacks were happening. Yeah, what, this 